Good morning. <laughs> Boy, that was, we're an hour earlier and the sun is in a different spot. Ah, I can see you, I think. Those kind of dots, too, that are kind of up there. Um, welcome to worship this Sunday morning. Thank you for being here an hour earlier. Uh, if you uh, are like me, this was excruciating uh, this morning when the alarm went off. Uh, it is so hard for me in the mornings. Um, but welcome to Daylight Savings Time. And the only good thing that I say, have to say about Daylight Savings Time is that next week spring is coming. So we're almost there. We're almost there. A couple things that I want to kind of point out to you that are coming up. Next Saturday will be a, a outdoor work party um, from 7.30 to 12, 7.30, really, 18? 7.30? Wow. Um, from 7.30 to 12.30 with lunch afterwards, so please come and be a part of that. There's lots of help that needs to be, uh, lots of work that needs to be done around here. Um, you can see all the things that are needed, uh, so please bring uh, the tools that uh, you will be using. Um, and make sure that you're here. If you have any questions, you can contact Bill Sir or Bob Stein, and they will get you all set up for that as well, too. Um, if you came in through the uh, entrance over by the fireside room, you will see that there's a little bit of a blank wall as you come by, but it, it has one or two crosses up there, and that is going to be a, our new cross wall. Um, and so you're invited, if you have a, a, a cross that you'd like to bring in and hang up on that wall, we invite you to do so. If you'd like to have it come in and you'd like to have us hang it up, um, I know somebody who will do that for me. Um, and uh, so it's just kind of one of those things that helps to beautify our, uh, our space. You'll also notice that there's a number of new signage around here and uh, posters. Um, so those are kind of exciting things that we've seen uh, kind of come in and reinvigorate our congregation. So thank you to those who have done that. Um, let's see, a couple other things that are coming up. There's a um, couple memorial services are coming up. Jim, James Landy will be next Friday at uh, 1 o'clock. And then George Squire's service will be on March 20th at 11 o'clock at Richland Lutheran. So um, just make sure you, you, if you need those on your calendar to get those on your calendar. Lori, you have a couple of announcements that you'd like to, to make. Um, I just wanted to draw your attention to a couple of youth and family things. Uh, on March 26th, we have a, a bingo night, um, bingo, not really night, it'll be a bingo noon. <laughs> uh, it, right after Sunday school at 11.15, we'll start with, uh, with um, lunch, a potluck lunch, um, hoping people to bring a variety of different things, you know, to eat for potluck. And then we're going to have candy bars for prizes, so we're asking you to bring those too. And then also uh, a canned food, so to fill the canned food cart. And we'll have bingo, and we'll play bingo, and we'll have a lot of fun. Also, uh, the candy kind of brings me into the fact that Easter is coming up very soon, and we're going to do something different this year. So we need you to bring in candy or small toys uh, for um, or small prizes, stickers, that kind of stuff, in before Easter. And it, the, there's only three more Sundays left after this Sunday to bring that stuff in. And during spring break, we'll be working on you putting all that candy to our uh, to good use. I'm not really letting you know a lot about it because it's kind of a surprise for the kids. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bingo noon, not bingo night. Bingo noon. I like that. <laughs> I really like that. Bingo noon. The sun. Here I come. Look out. <laughs> By the time I'm preaching, I might be at the the font. So, um, boy, that is a bright light. That's good to have. I think that's about it for all of our announcements. Uh, everything else you can see in your bulletin. Um, along with the bingo night, hopefully before service, you got to see the pictures of the bake-off. It was kind of fun to see those up there again and had how much fun we had for that too. So um, our youth group is from one to 99. So that means there's no excuses for you not to be there. 
um, we would really like you to be a part of that, and uh, we're excited for that as well, too. Okay? Our faith statement here at First Lutheran is grow in faith. Wow, it gets even louder when I'm in the middle of you. Wow, that's great. Yes, share God's love with all. And that all means everyone is welcome here. We are so glad that you're able to be here. Uh, whether you're here physically or whether you're with us online, we're glad that you're able to be uh, with us too. We also begin our service with a God question. It's just a question to kind of get us uh, prepared for worship, to kind of quiet our minds and, and our hearts and think about this, and also able a way to take our faith into the next uh, couple of days as well too. If you'd like to interact with this, you can do so on our Monday uh, Facebook page, on our Monday Musings, um, which is always fun to see uh, what people come up with for that too. So this is the question that I am asking you to ponder for today. How can giving be seen as an opportunity to really embrace life? How can giving be seen as an opportunity to really embrace life? Invite the congregation to please stand as you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who journeys with us these 40 days and sustains us with the gift of grace. Amen. Let us acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and God's mercy. Holy God, we confess to you our faults and failings. Too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. We cause hurt through you to all of us to heal. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we seek to follow your way of life. Amen. Dear friends, hear the good news. God so loved the world that God gave his only son, so that all may receive life. This promise is for you. God's embrace, God embraces you with divine mercy, forgives you in Christ's name, and revives you in the Spirit's power. Amen. Our gathering hymn is, O Jesus, Joy of Loving Hearts.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Let us pray. Merciful God, the fountain of living water, you quench our thirst and wash away our sin. Give us this water always. Bring us to drink from the well that flows with the beauty of your truth through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. First reading comes from Exodus chapter 17. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped in Rephraim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said with them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and the livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff of which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb, Strike the rock, and the water will come out of it, so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The psalm is Psalm 95. If I can have the women read the light verses, and the men read the dark verses. Come, let us sing to the Lord. 
let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pastures, and the sheep of God's hands. Oh, that today you would have heard God's voice. There your ancestors tested me, and they put me to the test, though they had seen my works. Indeed, I swore with my anger, they shall never come to rest. The second reading comes from Romans chapter 5. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to the grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope that the sharing of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak at the time that Jesus Christ died for the ungodly, indeed rarely will anyone die for the righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually die to dare, dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that we, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely now that we have been justified by his blood, we will be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, while we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, we will be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The Holy Gospel according to John, the fourth chapter. Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out from his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. 
The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you are you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For our salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? When the woman left her water jar and went back into the city, she said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him any, something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to complete his work. Do you not say, four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you, and see that the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages, and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I have sent you to reap that, you, that for which you did not labor, Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated. And at this time, I'd like to invite the kids of the congregation to come forward. Hi, Kinley. How are you? I think it's just you and me today. Is that okay? All right. Um, have you ever played a game called uh, Rock, Paper, Scissors? Yeah, you know how that goes? You know, you have, you have rock, you have paper, and you have scissors, right? So, okay, so, oh, Marigold's here. Hi, Marigold. How are you today? Good. Have you ever played this game called Rock, Paper, Scissors? Yeah? Okay. Sh can we play it a little bit real quick? We'll just do one, okay? You ready? We'll go one, two, three, and then we'll pick... Rock, paper, or scissors, okay? Ready? One, two, three. Oh, Marigold had rock. Marigold, you get to you get to break the scissors, right? So you get to smash our scissors. You want you don't want to smash scissors? That's okay. <laughs> what is Pastor teaching? Oh my gosh. Oh, let's let's just try one more time, okay? Ready? One, two, three. Dynamite! I win! Ha <laughs> That's a cheater. Yeah, that's 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 kind of silly, right? That doesn't work. That disqualified. Disqualified. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know the the game is kind of funny because you get rock, you got paper, you got scissors. And today in our story for the first story today, we have Moses talking about a rock and getting water from a rock. And and there's um, something that's on my desk that is very special to me. And it's in my pocket right now. Imagine that, right? What's that? A rock? It's a rock. Yeah, it's a, it's a special rock. 
It, yep. See, it's kind of hard. Nothing except it has something on the other side. Believe. Yeah, believe. It says believe on the rock. It's carved right in there, right? And this is kind of a funny rock because uh, one of my favorite TV shows is coming back this week. And one of the things in that TV show is the, the main character has a sign that up above his, his office that says believe. And he's a coach. And so his whole team slaps that, that sign, believe, every time they go out and play because they, they believe in themselves. This helps me to believe not only in myself, but believe in God, who's as solid as this rock. See, I can't break that rock, right? You can break it? Well, that would make me very sad. You don't want to make Pastor sad, do you? No, no. We wouldn't try to break this rock. We want to make sure that it's good and strong and holds for us. That's kind of like love, God's love for us. It's so super strong that it can't be broken. And so we believe in God's love. We believe in ourselves, and we believe in those who we love as well, too. Not just really believe that it's going to be broken. It, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. We believe in God, and we believe that he loves us no matter what, and we believe that we are his children, and then when we believe that, we believe that we can take care of others around us as well, too. Concrete is made out of partial rocks, I think. Now, somebody else can probably fill that in for you a lot better than me, because Pastor's not really good with concrete, except between his ears, okay? Shall we pray? All right, let's pray. Holy God, we thank you for helping us to believe in you, and that you remind us that we are your children. Help us each and every day as we know that you love us, that we can love others. In your name we pray, amen. All right, thank you so much for coming up. And you guys can go back to your house, to, to your houses? No. <laughs> to your pews. Don't go to, no, the most important part's coming up, Kinley. The sermon. Grace and peace to you from God our Father our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, who lives and reigns amongst us now and forever. Amen. There's a word in our uh, gospel story that kind of struck me this week. And it, it, it hasn't, I have to say, it hasn't struck me before. So it's just kind of one of those words that I, when I first read it, I thought, hmm, that really is in the Bible. The word gush. It is. It's in our, in our gospel story for today. And um, it has, a, that word gush has a lots of different uh, meanings. One, it can mean that there's a lot of liquid flowing from one place to the other. Have you seen the pictures of California and the, the spillways that are open for the first time in like 20 years? That water is just coming out of those so much that they've been inundated with that. It's just gushing down those, those waterways. I heard that there are 8,000 basketballs full of water being released a second in some of those uh, spillways. It's amazing to see the, the torrent and to see the floods and everything like that go on and go on and go on. A geyser is sometimes described as gushing up out of the, wa out of the ground. And you wouldn't exactly say that a leaky faucet is a gushing, but it could lead to uh, other problems, and you need to take care of it as quickly as you can possibly can. The other connotation of gush is sometimes how we describe things. You know, when somebody's really excited about something, um, really excited about a TV show that's coming out this week that's, that everybody should really watch every once in a while, you know, they just, it's so fantastic, the, the lessons in life and all that, and, and it's just wonderful. They just kind of gush all over and over and over about it in their excitement, right? Well, sometimes it's better to gush than it is just to hear that, eh, it was okay. <laughs> in today's gospel, we get a, just a little bit of a sense of this word. 
as Jesus is talking to the Samaritan woman about the water that he will give, which will become a spring that gushes up to eternal life. That word gush is only used in that one place. It's not used in the story ever again. But in our story, in the second part of our story, the narrative gathers up the spirit with the other sense of gushing forth, right? As the woman goes back into the city and she shares her experience with Jesus, many in that city come to believe because of her witness. She must have been gushing forth with both energy and excitement about her encounter with Jesus. And we in the church, as we travel along this Lenten journey from the ashes of Ash Wednesday to the cross of the crucifixion to the empty tomb of the resurrection, we find along that way that there are other people that spring forth in the same way that Jesus talks about this living water that gushes up from him. We hear in Acts that Peter heals someone who jumps up and gushes with praise. And again, with Paul, we also hear about someone who springs up and gushes and walks around. Now, the water in our baptismal font right here is very still. It's not gushing. I mean, it doesn't even trickle. It doesn't really move. Yet, we know that it is with God's word that gives that plain water the power and the shape that we need as God's people. You see, in baptism, we may sprinkle with just a few drops of water, and it may even seem like it's not even enough. But because of God's word and promise, it is always a gush of grace that is poured out upon us with endless love and mercy given to us from God. In today's gospel, the Samaritan woman asked Jesus for water. And that kind of gives us an image in our own minds of our own thirst for God. To this woman, Jesus offers living water as a sign of God's grace and flowing from the, the waters of baptism. As we continue on our Lenten journey to the resurrection, Jesus comes amongst us in both word and sacrament. He will do so today. We will gather together in a meal that brings us in holy communion with God and with each other. We will taste and touch and see what the forgiveness of God means and tastes like in our own mouths. And we have already heard the words of loving forgiveness and that our sins have been washed away. It's Christ who comes to us in this word and sacrament. It's Jesus who offers us this living water of God's mercy and forgiveness. And so may we be blessed to gush along with this Samaritan woman about our own experiences of what Jesus means among us now and forever. Amen. Before we get to the hymn of the day, uh, yesterday we had a, a retreat with our council, um, those who are newly elected to council, and then today we are going to be installing our council. Um, and so at this time, if you are a council member, I invite you to come forward and meet me at the rail right here. So please come forward now.
I so desperately want to say pop quiz right now, but that's not, that would not be appropriate, would it? <laughs> Our Lord, who came amongst us as a servant, calls us to faith and a life of loving service to our neighbor. You who are gathered here stand among us as called to be a leader and render a particular service, a gift from God to inspire us to love and to do good works. I ask you now, will you assume this ministry in the confidence that comes from God? If so, answer by saying, I will with the help of God. Will you trust in God's care? Seek to grow in love for those who you serve. Strive for excellence in your skills and adorn the gospel of God with a godly life. If so, ask, answer, I will, with the help of God. Almighty God has given you the will to do these things, graciously gave you the strength and compassion to perform them. Amen. Let us pray. O oh, gracious God, you have called workers of varied tasks to the world in which your church, so that you have called your servant to this ministry. Grant them joy and a spirit of bold trust that their work may stir up in each of us to a life of fruitful service through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, guide, bless, and keep you that you may be faithful in the ministry in which you have been called. Amen. Dear friends, these are your leaders of your congregation. Please respond. To, yes, give them a round of applause. I have to say that I have felt this uh, throughout my tenure here, but I have always thought this is the best council ever. Um, and we kind of talked about that yesterday, but I really am excited to work with these people in uh, the ministry that God has called us to do together and on behalf of and to help you bring you into as well uh, this ministry in, over the next year. So give them uh, your support, your prayers, and uh, when they ask, say yes. So, um, all right. Let us continue on with the hymn of the day, which I was going to remember off the top of my head and have no idea what it is, so...
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all creation. We pray for your church, bless partnerships with other Christians and interreligious dialogue, guide the daily work of denominational and congregational leaders, strengthen our combined witness for the sake of the gospel, that all experience your life-giving love. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for the universe, all creation teems with life, from the depths of the earth and seas to the skies above. Fill us with awe and reverence for the diversity and preservation of life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world. Topple the dividing walls that separate us from our neighbors. Form us into your beloved community where diversity of gender, race, language, ability, and ethnic origin is celebrated and affirmed. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. Be present with all who are lonely and give courage to all who are afraid. Comfort those who live with chronic illness or other sickness. We ask that you send your spirit to be with the family and friends of George Squires and Dustin Wetz as they grieve their loss. Watch over little Sebastian Kitsito. We pray for Shirley Pierce, Linda Wallace, Lorraine Becker, Helen Dogs, Doug Chenault, Audrey Blagan, Marlis Babington, and Joanne Landy. We pray for those who are struggling with mental health and addiction issues and for all those fighting COVID-19. We remember Guy Goodbow, Ed Ackridge, Nancy, Sue, and Nancy. Be with all who are facing the diagnosis and treatment of cancer. Lori LaPeebold, Renee Kilmer, Skylar Gibson, Janice Tomac, Larry Peterson, Cheryl Nelson, Paul Cook, Christopher Powers, Adam, and Ashley. Give them your living water always. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for this congregation. Nurture their faith and pour your love into their hearts. Inspire our community by their testimony to God's grace in their lives. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Oh God, you so love your church. Raise up leaders who care for your people. Bless Layfield theologians, seminary and college professors, and all who are called to the ministry of teaching, that they form and inspire us for the work of the gospel. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We give thanks for the lives of all of your saints. Their hope in you is sustain, their hope in you sustain lives of faith and service. Encourage us with the hope they shared in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share this peace.
invite the congregation to please stand as you are able. Let us pray. God of good gifts, we receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. We call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. You are indeed holy, almighty and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into this world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his solitary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants. And these are our own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness. You may be seated. For communion, we have two options. The first is that you may have communion in, your, in the pew. And if you have your communion packet, you may pull back the plastic flap, revealing the wafer inside. The body of Christ given for you. 
then you may peel back the second revealing the juice inside the blood of Christ shed for you or you may come forward at the direction of the ushers to the railing let all who love the Lord come and partake with he graciously offers himself amen
invite the congregation to please stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Embodied God, at your table we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our heart open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. Receive the blessing. God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless you in this Lenten journey. Amen. Our sending song is Come Thou Font of Every Blessing. Go in peace, share God's love with all.